Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I am here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. And to kick things off today, we have a couple of offerings from AMD. So the first thing I have for you today is the specs for the Sapphire Nitro Plus Radeon RX 590. Now, so... The important thing to keep in mind is that this particular edition is definitely overclocked at least a little. But now that I've got that out of the way, let's look at the actual specifications. We have it operating at 1560 MHz out of the box, and of course, does have two 304, so two 2304 stream processors. Now, you will notice something a bit queer here, yeah, a bit strange, if you will, as it does also list a quote next gen FinFET 14 technology, but that's most likely a typo. It's pr pretty confirmed at this point that it is, of course, 12nm. So the other specs that we saw here are 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory across a 256 bus and we see a 8400 MHz memory clock for this particular model. So this basically confirms stuff that we've already heard, and also that it has the same number of compute units, and also pretty much everything else. Another thing that we learned from this particular listing, which was spotted on Newegg, is indeed the pricing, and it is 500 Canadian dollars which is about $378 US. So obviously we're going to be getting a full reveal from AMD next week, so do keep that in mind, but we've pretty much learned everything there is to learn about at least these particular editions of the RX 590. But that's not the only AMD piece I have for you today, as we have something more regarding the AMD Radeon M. I-6-0, which of course is Vega 20. So of course we finally had the reveal of Vega 20, the first 7nm GPU, and this is obviously in the form of the Radeon Instinct MI-6-0, and obviously AMD were very keen to show off benchmarks versus the Tesla V100. Now there's a very interesting report which has surfaced on WCCFTech.com, and I will of course include a link to this in the description below this video. So they were obviously paying attention to the benchmarks alongside the rest of us, and they noticed something rather suspect. The performance listed by AMD for the Tesla V100 for ResNet 50. So they did some research and found that essentially the Tesla had been significantly handicapped in AMD's results. So... What do I mean by that? Well, according to WCCF's findings, in the footnotes of AMD's performance numbers, there was something rather interesting and definitely critical. The test mode for their benchmarks was conducted in FP32 mode. So this basically means that the Tesla, sorry, the yeah, the Tesla V100 was operating without its tensor cores actually being enabled. And this, as you might expect, is very, very important. So obviously, these tensor cores, when they are actually obviously enabled in tensor mode, can be used to accelerate inference and learning performance by multiple factors. So obviously, the results that we saw for the AMD ResNet 50 training, we saw the MI60 getting 334 and the Tesla V100 getting 357, and they obviously said comparable performance in this particular benchmark. However, per third-party tests and also NVIDIA's own numbers, I'll get to that in a moment, you actually see that the Tesla V100 gets just three times that of the Radeon Instinct. So obviously you should always kind of take first-party benchmarks with a pinch of salt and that obviously applies to NVIDIA's as well, but these have been shown in third-party benchmarks as well. However, with all of that in mind, the testing yields are about 100, sorry, 1,189 images per second compared to the 334 images per second 
of the MI60, which was shown by AMD. So this is about 3.5 times speed up in performance. And NVIDIA actually had a bit of a statement to follow up with this, because essentially WC reached out to them for a benchmark running in tensor mode with ResNet 50 training, because shockingly they didn't just happen to have a Tesla V100 lying around, not that I blame them. I mean, I can't say I've got one lying around on my kitchen shelf. Anyway, so the quote they actually had was, quote, the 70 watt Tesla T forward Turing tensor cores delivers more training performance than 300 watt Radeon Instinct MI60, and Tesla V100 can deliver 3.7 times more training performance using tensor cores and mixed precision fp16 compute and fp32 accumulate allowing faster time to solution while converging neural networks to required levels of accuracy so i just want to be clear here amd weren't lying exactly the mi60 does have comparable performance to the tesla v100 but in 50 sorry fp32 mode only and this was shown on the benchmark slide it does say in the footnotes it's not like this was hidden or not there or whatever it was obviously it was like it was small and you had to look for it but it was there so they definitely skewed things in their favor somewhat but they weren't lying exactly but it is definitely worth bringing to the attention that it wasn't completely 100 percent the story i suppose is the best way to put it so for the full research and full digging and all of the process that this took do visit the article which is going to be linked in the description below this video i have to give it to wc for for spotting this and obviously doing some pretty damn good research anyway we're going to move swiftly over to Intel. So what we actually have here is some proposed data privacy regulations in the US from Intel. Now again this is a proposed legislation not something that has actually obviously been put into place. So what they actually bring into the table I hear you ask well if it was actually brought into practice the legislation would among a few other things find companies that don't take reasonable standards to reasonable safeguards should i say to protect personal data and would actually jail executives who lie about the measures they're taking so this bill is 27 pages long so rather lengthy to say the least i'm obviously going to very much be giving you the cliff notes here but According to a statement from Intel, this particular legislation, quote, aims to bring together policymakers and others in a transparent and open process that helps drive the development of actual data privacy legislation. The collection of personal information is a growing concern. The US needs a privacy law that both protects consumer privacy and creates a framework in which the new industries can prosper. Now, obviously, the timing of this is definitely key because those of you in the UK and the EU will know the dreaded letters GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation Rules, where data protection was very much tightened up. I'm sure you all remember those wonderful emails we're getting for months of going, hey, we need to sign up to this thing, you need to agree to this, due to GDPR, hey, we've updated our, our privacy regulation, GDPR, hey, hey, have you heard these words enough yet? Have I, have I annoyed you enough yet? I mean, I get why they had to do it, very much so, but it doesn't mean it wasn't annoying. Anyway... <laughs> The, obviously, GDPR rules required companies to be more transparent about how user data is handled and obviously get data um, permission before that data can actually be used or face heavy fines. So, internet, in, Intel's, internets, Intel's proposed bill basically is calling for companies to provide a, annual certification to the FTC for the safeguards they're actually taking to protect that data. So, they're basically putting their money where their mouth is, putting it in writing, giving it to the FTC, and if any of that information is found to be false or inaccurate, the person who proposed the report could face up to $1 million in fines and up to 10 years in prison. And also, it would make companies get receive explicit consent from you, the user, for the collection of personal information that could create, quote, significant privacy risk. So what kind of data is this? I hear you ask. Well, um, obviously, physical mental health, sexual life, genetics, geolocation, biometrics, and all, and all that sort of stuff. And also, they would have to specify how they are using that personal information. And they are not stopping there until are being rather aggressive with this proposed bill, to say the least. They are seeking to regulate the use of personal data for machine learning, predictive analysis, and, of course, algorithms. Now, this is only going to apply to at least fairly sized businesses because these rules would not apply to companies with fewer than 15 employees and any company that collects data from fewer than 5,000 individuals. So... We're not talking like, you know, some mom and pop here is getting scrutinised. We're talking about big companies that are 
connect, collecting a lot of data from a lot of people, and obviously if their security is found to be lax, or the way they deal with data is found to be lax, the obviously the ramifications from that could be definitely meaningful. Now there is a link again in the description below this video to their privacy bill. It has all of the information in its fullest for your perusal. I would very much recommend to give it a read if you're at all interested. I have very much given you the bullet points, the cliff notes as I said previously. So do keep that in mind. But I've given you, I would say, the the important parts, the key parts to take away from what Intel are actually proposing here. So go give that a read. It's definitely worth at least having a scan to see what they are actually proposing. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.